Hi, thank you for purchasing the adjustable epoxy river table form and router sled. Today I'm going to show you how to attach the router sled to this form using the tracks on the top of the sides. So let's go ahead and get started. You'll need a couple tools, 7 16 inch socket or wrench, 9 16 wrench, 9 16 socket or two 9 16 wrenches, whichever you may have, 3 8 inch wrench, and a tape measure. Those tools you should be able to assemble your router sled. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is slide the adjusting side as far out as you can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You're going to slide this out to the end. Leave these adjusting knobs loose. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the router sled in the track. Here's our router sled. These here are your router stops. Once we get it set up, that will stop your router from running into the sides of your form. On the bottom, two hex head bolts. That is what is going to go into the track and it's going to slide in the track. Up at the top, you'll see a threaded rod. That is an adjustment for different types of routers. Different routers have different widths. That will allow you to adjust your width of your router and make these two tracks parallel to each other. So your router slides freely. I'm going to go ahead and slide this track in. Sometimes these bolts, you might have to turn them a little bit because both sides of the bolt head have to be flat on the flat side. Now you're going to slide this down through. You'll see it's nice and smooth. Once I know it's smooth, I'm going to tighten up the adjustment knobs and that'll keep this fixed in place. You want to make sure this is level this way and across. Also, once you have your router sled on, you want to take the bolts that were on the track and you want to put these in the end of the track. That way your router sled cannot slide outside the track when you're using it. That will require a 7 16 socket. I have two bolts already on the other side so I don't need to put those on. I only took two off. That will stop your router sled when you get down here. It will not come off the end now. Next step is you want to build the slab up so it's closest to the router sled. The closer you have it to the sled, the more room you're going to have, the more material you're going to be able to cut off because your bit is going to be able to be adjusted more. If you have your slab way down and your router bit's just barely touching it at its max adjustment, you're not going to have any room to lower your router bit to take another pass. So what I did was I took some 2x4s, okay, I cut them so that they just fit inside the form. And then it still was not high enough, so I took a piece of trim and I'm going to put that on top. For the slab I'm going to do, these two pieces of scrap wood will be enough to set the slab on and then we're going to be able to screw the slab to these scrap pieces of wood and it's going to allow us to keep our slab fixed. Now when you put the screw into the slab, 
You want to make sure the screw heads are not up above the slab. I usually just use the corner of the slab just so there's a little hole and you do not want to use very long screws where it'll go down into the plastic, okay? We don't want holes in our plastic. So let's go ahead and put the slab in the jig. Right here we have a piece of Pennsylvania black walnut. I'm going to set that in the middle of the form. This piece of wood is not real wide. If you're into a wide piece of wood, you want to make sure you have space next to the edges. So when you come off with the router, the bit is not going into the sides and cutting the sides. Okay. You don't want to run your router into the track. That's going to ruin your tracks. So once I have the slab in, I'm going to take screws and I'm going to put them down in the slab, four of them. And that will make this nice and secure, okay? Because I already have these two by fours. They can't go anywhere. They're in just the exact size of the form. Once I do that, the next thing you want to do is make sure your form is secured to a bench or your sawhorses. Here is the foot for the form. You'll notice it has a little wing that comes off with a hole in it. That hole is for a screw or a bolt to go down into your bench or your sawhorse to hold this fast. Once you have it leveled, you want to make sure you either fasten to your bench or clamp to your bench. There's four feet. Two feet in the back on the fixed side, and there's two feet that look like this on the side where the pipes slide back and forth. You want to make sure this is secure. This is HDPE plastic. It's slippery. It's, it will slide around once you start routering. Okay, so you want to make sure it's very secure. And you might have to do something else to get your slab in here. What I'm showing you here, this is not the only method you can use. You can use clamps. Just make sure everything is below the level of the slab. Okay, you don't want to be above because then your router will be hitting it. Notice I got about a quarter inch between the sled and the slab. That's nice and close, so that's, we're in good shape there. We'll take our router. I already have this adjusted with the threaded rod. It's already adjusted. When you do adjust this, you want these parallel. So that the distance should be the same throughout, like railroad tracks. Now you're going to adjust your router stops. So when you slide this down, your router bit is not running into the side. Okay, and where this stop is here is fine, but my slab is way back here. There's no sense really running it out way out past the slab. So I'm going to take and set these a little closer. 3 8 wrench, you'll slide it up, and, I, and I'll look, and where our router comes over the edge of the slab, I will go ahead and I will tighten this. And that's my one stop. We'll go over on the other side. And I need to go a little bit further. I usually do these on a diagonal to each other. So I'll put one on one rail and one on the other rail. Okay, we got that there. We'll slide this up. We'll tighten it. Okay, now we're tight. When we touch that stop, it won't go any further. Now, once you have this set up, the next step is going to be to go ahead and router our slab. 
So what you're going to do is you, this is going to go back and forth. What I recommend putting on the base of your router plate, paste wax. That's going to make it slide a lot easier. Also put paste wax on your router sled. The easier it'll slide, the less resistance. So what you'll do is you'll go back and forth. Move your sled back and forth. Move your sled, come to the stops, back and forth. And you'll do that until this is flat. Once you flatten the one side, you're going to flip it over, and then you're going to do the same to the other side. Now, sometimes when you get these slabs, they're really twisted. You may have to put it in your form and level it up, get it to the best you can with shims underneath for the first side, which that's going to make it nice and flat. Once you do the first side, when you flip it over, you can just put it right down on your wood. Granted that the wood you're using to set it on is flat. And you might have to split the difference on these twisted slabs. Just get it the best you can where you're not taking a real lot off on one side or the other and then just flatten it out. You'll have to do the best you can. When you're routering, safety first. Safety glasses. Make sure safety glasses are worn. Would also suggest a dust mask. These big slabs are dusty and you make a lot of chips. So safety glasses and a dust mask, very important. You may want to have a shop vac for vacuuming up the chips, clean up some of the dust. Some routers will have a dust port on the back of them. Okay. Hope this was helpful. And let the rivers rage on.